Alrighty, welcome to a 4-4 four four cube draft where myself, Isaac Heisenberg, I, th I think the one from Breaking Bad, the same guy, uh, and Tom Martell are battling against Ick, Adham, Governing Dynamics, that's Gettys, I'm just going to call him Gettys for uh, those of longtime fans of Florida Magic, and of course, Sandy Dog. I also have opened a Mox Emerald. You'll love to see it. Sandy's passing to me, so i got to keep that in mind. Luckily, this Caves of Chaos adventure is going the other direction. Though I actually think that is what Ick is going to take. Take Caves of Chaos adventure, leaving Isaac with probably a fetch land or path. Maybe a Grim Monolith if he's feeling spicy. And then we go from there. But uh, I'm pretty happy taking a Mox Emerald, i got to say. I'm a little less happy with the second pick here since it's just kind of a weak pack. There's a Taiga... Just duels are generally pretty good. Sylvan Karyatid, it's one of the better accelerants. I like Sylvan Karyatid more than Olvenwald Oddity, especially now that we've got uh, Axebane Ferox or whatever it's called, the, the new one from Murders at Karlov Manor. Just a lot of 4-4s four for 4 with haste, and I think uh, Oddity is very good, but I think Sylvan Karyatid is... I mean, there's a lot of Mana Dorks too, but the Mana Dorks are pretty important. Yeah, I guess I'm going to Sylvan Karyatid over Taiga here. It's kind of a close pick, but I really like Karyatid, and the rest of this pack is pretty weak. I took, I started with an Emerald. Sandy doesn't draft green all that often, so... All signs point to Sylvan Karyatid. Whoa, and now we got a pack. There's a Mystic Confluence and a Fast Bond. And a Jace, but I think Confluence is generally better than Jace. Given my start, I'm just going to take Fast Bond here, and then maybe Ramen up a Wheel. I don't know if that's likely, but it's possible. Let's see, Jace, Pilgrim, Confluence, Carnosaur, Portal, Tails End, Dismissal, Waterlog Grove. Yeah, it's possible, but all right, I'm just going to take Fast Bond here. This seems like a pretty good start for Fast Bond, and I haven't gotten to do any Fast Bond nonsense later, or for a while. <laughs> so back when I was on PT coverage, we got the mandate that this is actually pronounced Karyatid, and we should say Sylvan Karyatid, and I was like, hmm... I'm just not going to do that. No no one calls it that. <laughs> oh, this pack's got a Caracas, which I do like. Sandy passed a Caracas. Maybe he's on his blue-black blue black era, because Sandy does like blue-black as well. I might just take Tireless Tracker, though. Really good with Fast Bond. Pretty good with Mox, too. Tireless Tracker is just a fantastic card, so I think I'll take that over Caracas, though that is a pretty close pick. All right, it looks like it's time to take a non-green card here. It's got to be Ponder. I love Ponder. Steam Vents isn't bad, just blue duels are generally good. <laughs> Steam Core Scholar, I think, is gonna is gonna be decent in some decks. This this deck not so much. And there's a triome, but it's not of the triome of a color I'm even that interested in. So yeah, I'm happy enough to ponder here. Plus I passed uh Mystic Confluence and um Maybe cutting blue isn't too bad though. I guess after passing Caves of Chaos Adventure to Ick, I didn't pass any other good red cards, really. A Carnosaur, I suppose. So I feel pretty good about, about where we're at here. And here we've got Iteration and Memory Jar, but I think given the Fast Bond, it's Memory Jar time. I don't, I don't mind missing out on Garrick. And I think there are some green decks that want Sharp-Eyed Rookie. I'm not quite yet ready to cut this from the cube, but you do need to be a beatdown green deck. So I think that's not me. And I'll Jar, though I do like Expressive Iteration. Just When you have Fast Bond, you got to try to maximize it. Okay, well... Sylvan Library, Noble Hierarch, and Chariot. I think I'm just going to take Noble, though. The green one-drops are so powerful. And I'm going to want to splash blue. And I like Sylvan, but I'm going to have a bunch of, hopefully, draw seven. So let's just take Noble and line up for a faster draw. But green definitely seems open, so I'm really glad that I'm in this spot. Well, there's a sail into the west. Yeah, I'll take it. That's a draw seven. Okay. Over Odawara and Arcane Denial, both both cards I, I I do like, but we're we're on blue green draw sevens now, and we are going pretty hard. Hole Breacher would be a fantastic open. Any of the draw seven punishers would be worth looking at. Hole Breacher would by far the best one, but Windswept Teeth Wield, what is happening? All right, well I guess the people in this pod draft very differently than I do, but uh, I'm gonna take Windswept Teeth. Like I thought that was gonna be like the third card taken, and seven cards got taken before it came back to me. Whatever, I'm not complaining. All right, Oddity came back, but at this point I actually think I want Endurance. I'm not really looking to beat them down so much, and uh, Endurance is actually kind of nice at making sure you don't deck sometimes, as well as being like a nice little hate card against Reanimator. So that's fine. Okay, well, we didn't wheel uh, the Ramen up, but 
portals here. So is a one drop elf. So is a blue green land. Hmm. With fast bond, I'm kind of interested in waterlog grove because I think like crucible Zernorb, even though Ramanop is gone, is still like a, a thing I could do. Don't mind losing out on tails end. I'm just deciding if I want to lose out on Avicen's pilgrim. I think that's fine. I'll take waterlog grove. It's close though. And then here, ooh, thespian stage or Kozilek. I'll pass again. I don't care about that. I think I'm going to take Thespian Stage. This deck could definitely end up being a Dark Depths deck. So having the stage to set that up it is kind of nice. Uh, setting the stage, as it were. And then what we're looking for here... I mean, I'll take an Indotha Triumph. A Triumph that I can fetch with Windswept Teeth is definitely good. Oh, Garrick. But actually might be the time for Gitrog. We got picked up a fetch, a Black Green Triumph. All right. Well, we'll, we'll Gitrog here. I, I think Garrick is kind of weak plus it makes it look like we're not playing green nice a little bit of extra value there okay so going into the next pack certainly would like draw seven punishers more draw sevens would be fine am interested in crucible zern orb type stuff now that i have this fast bond and uh well we'll see what we open here there's a tinker i guess i wish i took that portal now um wow this pack is kind of a beating I kind of have to take the Bombardiers here. Otherwise, I'm passing it to Sandy, who didn't pass a single red card the whole draft. We also didn't pass a black card. I mean, I guess Thoughtseize is also pretty good in, in this deck. Hmm. I don't think I need to take Chrome Host Seed Shark. We're not in a position to take Tinker. Sandy also didn't take white cards. Maybe I do just take the Thoughtseize, though, because I've got Indotha Triumph and Windswept Teeth. Sylvan Karyatid. And... Bombardiers I would try to play still, but it wouldn't be quite as good. All right, I, I guess I've actually talked myself into Thoughtseize. And I might just follow it up with a Vamp. Oh, there's Valky and Bring to Light in the same pack. That's funny. Vamp can help set up all the draw sevens as well. Okay, I'll take Vamp here over Valky and Bring to Light. Vamp just means I have twice as many Fast Bonds in my deck. That's a pretty nice place to be. Well, there's the Zern Orb I want, but I'm not passing Library. I think Library is awesome. And there is a decent chance Zern Orb comes back because well, there's one, two, three, four, five cards. I think Zern Orb is probably not going to come back, and I'm still taking Library because also I don't really want to pass a card that this good to the opposition when I could just take it. Like, Zern Orb is going to do nothing for anyone else at the table. Someone might take it speculatively or... Maybe hate drafted or something. Maybe there's an academy deck that wants a zero mana artifact. But the Telerian, or the, the the Library of Alexandria will be great if I pass it to Sandy. He might actually take it. They'll probably take Skyclave. I would rather just uh, take the library for myself and maybe maybe wheels are an arm. Okay, so this pack has a Marsh Flats, which is pretty nice. I love Preordain. I really do, and I so so I so do love Breach as well. And Loras, a lot of cards I like, but I think I've got to take Marsh Flats here. Another uh, fetch land in a Gitrog monster deck with Fast Bond and Tireless Tracker. It also gets black green thanks to Indotha Trium. All right, I think I've got to take that. And then here, oh, there's a Savannah. Savannah's kind of nice because it makes flats into untapped green. I guess I don't really care about Candelabra here. We're not a Kinnan deck or a Tough Cookie deck. Yeah, we'll take Savannah. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up playing uh white as well ooh is a is a cheeky little plow under too much i mean there's also regrowth regrowth's kind of nice with draw sevens just getting to re regrowth a draw seven is pretty good but plow under does seem like kind of nice in this deck i have some good acceleration i'm gonna go with the plow under here and pass a zerda to go along with that kinnan if someone's doing that thing there's also elder spirit guide but i think this deck would rather just play more lands because it's got fast bond and maybe regrowth comes back. Regrowthing a plow under is also some good times. So and some more lands that I don't really need. An elvish mystic, which is probably fine. I do like cryptic coat, but I'm not in a position to take it here. Yeah, this looks like for sure an elvish mystic. Huh. This is an interesting pack because Lion's Eye Diamond is a very strong card, but it doesn't actually look like we've got a Lion's Eye Diamond deck here. I don't want Talisman either. What I'm thinking of is actually this Tamiyo. Tamiyo in this kind of deck, I think can be pretty good. Mm. Get back a Plow Under, get back a draw seven. If you have a lot of mana, Tamiyo is good. I think I'm gonna try taking Tamiyo here. 
But I don't know. That one's close. Okay. Elder Gargaroth came back. Sandy gets his choice of Timeless Dragon or Adeline, but uh, this actually looks like a fine Gargaroth deck. We're fast bonding into big plays. That's, that's kind of what's going on here. And if I could wheel that Zurn Orb, I would be pretty thrilled. All right, Valky and Bring to Light came back, but I guess here, of all places, maybe a Corsair of Crufix could actually be good. I've got a Mox. I've got Gitrog Monster, Fast Bond. All right, all right, all right fine. We'll Corsair and nah, no, uh, no, no Zurn Orb, but it's okay. We got an Overgrown Tomb. That, that's actually going to be pretty good. And you know what? Maybe it's time for Oracle of Moldiah to finally give Oracle another try. You know what? But Besage is pretty good. I should just take Besage, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, Oracle. I already took a Corsair. That's close enough for me. Oh, man. Oracle's on, on, on her way out, I gotta say. I am passing two good late blue cards, but uh, not much I can do about that. And then here, I don't think I want to play Tough Cookie. I don't really want to play Trinket Mage. I don't care too much about passing Sinkhole. I guess I'll take the Trinket Mage. I don't know. Maybe I would side in Tough Cookie against... Uh, Aggro. Ooh, the regrowth wield. That's actually kind of nice. Regrowth to get back plow under. You know, we've got a sick time walk deck here. Can I just open time walk back three? Is that reasonable? Is that a reasonable thing to ask? Shame the Zern orb didn't go. Well, there's the brain freeze to go with the breach I passed. There's an exploration, which I would love. There's a Lutri too. Lutri is pretty good. I guess I'm not the best at copying Lutri though. Eight man, a little Lutri plow under. I guess my reason... To, man, Lutri's kind of hard to cast. I'm playing like an OBS on deck. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to take Exploration. I'm just... This is the deck we're drafting. We'll, 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 we'll let the chips fall where they may. Now I'm going to take Verdant Catacombs. It's a great fetch land deck. Over really not much. And, oh, there's a Bayou. Pretty hard to pass up a Bayou. What else is there? There's Life Death that doesn't do much for me. There's Territorial Kavu, which... I guess I'm pretty heavy on obs on fixing, and that's about it. There's also like Sunfall or Witherbloom Command. Him to Turok is a very good card. Maybe I actually want him. I just picked up a third fetch. I have Overgrown Tomb, three fetches. All right, and I think I might even get Bayou back. All right, let's take him. I think that this deck's going to be decent against creature decks with like Gargaroth and Gitrog Monster. And him is a pretty good disruptive element. I don't think I want Gemstone Caverns in a deck with a bunch of fast spawns and explorations. I would love to wheel either Witherbloom Command or Bayou, but I guess I'm not holding my breath on that. I could have just taken the Bayou, but having three fetches and Overgrown Tomb makes it so I kind of already have that anyway. Okay. What else could we use? Obviously, like a Duress would be great, though. Having the Thought Seize does help. We're not getting Time Walk. I do know that. Uh, Sail into the West and Tamiyo. I mean, there's a chance I don't play any of these blue cards, to be honest. I don't have any blue fixing except a waterlogged grove. So I could use a, a blue green lander of some kind. Mm. There's Sword of the Meek for whoever got the Thopter Foundry. There's a Terra Sunder and a Vindicate. I'd actually be interested in both. There's Xander's Lounge, which I could fetch with Verdant or Marsh Flats, and it would be a blue black duel, plus red for tribal flames and have territorial Kavu wheels. It's that or take Sentinel, but I actually kind of like the Xander's Lounge idea because there's a couple other domain cards floating around, and I think just getting to put Tribal Flames in the deck seems pretty decent. It's just decent interaction plus player finishing. I have Regrowth and Tamiya, so sometimes I just do like 10 damage with Tribal Flames. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Well, there's the Crucible of Worlds that I would have liked with my Xurnor, but with three fetches and Corsair and Fast Bond. I think Crucible actually looks pretty good. So I will take Crucible here over like Raugrin Triome and Spar's Headquarters, something like that. Yeah, that seems fine. We also still have outs for Dark Depths and got plenty of lands. <laughs> I wouldn't mind one untapped blue-green land or blue... Actually, blue-black would work pretty nicely. Or blue-white. Really, I've got a bunch of different kinds of blue X lands that would be nice for me. So here, hmm, we've got the fourth elf or third elf. Coveted Jewel seems just kind of expensive. Simic Growth Chamber is kind of funny because 
With fast bond, you can basically... Well, it doesn't actually do anything because a courser breaks you even on mana. I don't know. It doesn't... It's kind of nice just as like a way to get some value with fast bond and exploration. There's also just taking walking ballistic because it's like a good card. But, eh, you know, I actually think I would play Simic Growth Chamber here. Oh, Tropical Island. Yeah, sorry, Tishana's Tidebinder. Tropical Island is really nice. All right, let's pick seven. Pick eight. Oh, there's Primetime, Nyssa, and Cobra. I'm going to take one of those. I don't think I, want, I need to take Toxic Deluge. It's not actually the best Primetime deck. I think I might just want Nyssa because Nyssa is just faster. And I like Cobra, but I have a bunch of Accelerants. I don't mind taking another big card. Oh, Nature's Lore came back, so Botanical Sanctum. Nature's Lore gets Indotha Trium or Trop. Gets a bunch of different colors. But this deck kind of just wants to play lands, so I'm just going to take Botanical Sanctum. I want to play like 19 lands in this deck. Something along that. Right now I'm at 17 or 18 plus mocks would probably be okay. I'm thinking I just don't play Tamiyo here, unfortunately. Because currently this is 18 plus a mox. This Hymn to Turok is a little bit dicey, but I think I think that the mana will work for him, and I think him is the kind of card this deck could use. Oh, same with Leyline Binding, though. Leyline Binding is also a nice one that's a reward for being uh, five colors here, having this Xander's Lounge alongside everything else. Mm. The Tribal Flames as well. Maybe I don't play the Hymn, actually. We've got a domain theme. And then Territorial Kavu now, I think, actually, yeah, looks great. All right. We're in. We're in. No him. We're in for a bunch of uh, domain cards. And I think I'd like Terra Sunder more than Vindicate. It's just easier to cast, like, color-wise. And you can cast it for two some of the time, which is nice. Oh, Raugrin Triumph is a nice pickup. Okay. So I feel like we kind of got everything we wanted here. Except Zernorb. Zernorb would have been nice, but everything else looks pretty good. We're two cards over at this point, but I bet I could figure that out. And here there's an Elvish Reclaimer, but I, I guess I'll just take Llanowar Elf. I don't know. Do I want Elvish Mystic and Llanowar Elf? It's possible I don't, given that I picked up this exploration. Like, it's, it's actually not unreasonable to think that I could just end up wanting... A bunch of lands and just play Noble and Karyatid in Mox and Five Spawn and Exploration is my acceleration. Dryad Arbor is kind of funny. I didn't have Green Sun Zenith. I have some fetches that can go get it, but I'm not sure that I want that either. All right, let's get to deck building here. Kind of funny that I took uh, him over Bayou and now I wish I just took the Bayou, but so it goes. <laughs> this is uh, almost no non basics. I think. I mean, I think I actually do take out Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystic. I need to take out one more as well, because I picked up that Terra Sunder. I could also maybe take one of the fives out, or sail into the west, but I kind of like all those. I like Endurance. I like Regrowth. Let's see. So mana-wise, this is a colorless land. This is a green... These are like all green lands. It's pretty sick, actually. I've got one two non-green lands and the rest of these one two so i probably want like one more forest one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen green yeah uh, i don't really need a plains do i need a mountain i don't have an untapped red but none of my fetches can fetch red anyway um and how many blue sources do i have one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's plenty of blue without an island. Because I have the trop to go get. Because I have some pretty good fetchables. I have good fetchables for every color except red. Oh, that taiga would have worked out. Um, I kind of want a mountain just so I can have an untapped source at some point. And do I want to cut one more card for another land? Because I have exploration, fast bond, and a bunch of draw sevens. Do I need a swamp? How many black sources? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, a swamp doesn't sound so bad. That way my Verdant and Marsh Flats can get untapped black even without having to pay life, which is nice. And I've got plenty of green. And this does make me want to cut one card. 
I think it is going to be the Gargaroth. And I'll side that in. Okay. Or I could cut the Tribal Flames, but I already want to play Territorial Kavu. I'm pretty sure I want to play both. And yeah, I think they'll be good in this deck. The Crucible, I think, is also good with a bunch of fetch lands. If And if I get a... Because I, I have these three fetches. If I get Courser out, it negates the life loss a bit. And then... I can replay Waterlog Grove, which also seems reasonable. So I think Crucible is okay here. Though it's possible... Now, Crucible Fastbond, Crucible Exploration will get me a lot of lands. Because I have a lot of fetchable lands, right? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or 9, I guess. The mountain's not fetchable. All right. I think this is where I'm going to start. All right. My team's got some decent decks. Isaac's got a nice blue-black flash reanimate. World Spine Worm, Exhum deck with Entomb, Imperial Seal, some good stuff to get, a Delta and a Creeping Tar Pit also. Um, Heisenberg is on Blue-White Splash Mind Twist with Black Lotus, Undermount Adventure, Fracture Identity, Luris, a bunch of decent white weenie cards, and some good lands, so I like that too. And then Tom's on just the classic Tinker, Fury, Thopter, Sword, Reanimate, Faithless, Looting, Persist deck with Minsk and Boo. And strip mine. All right, well, I'll let Tom, I'll let Tom do that. <laughs> Playing against Dick here. Uh, oh, this has got to be a Lutri companion here. And I'm going to go ahead and play first. And well, I'll definitely keep this hand. Uh, what do I want to do early? I think I'm going to play Indotha Trium. Because I don't really need to play a turn one noble off Besage. There's nothing to do with that. And then... Turn two, I can go Noble plus Vamp, depending on what Ick is up to. All right, let's play the Noble. I think I'm just going to play the Swamp so I can Vamp here. And I could Vamp for a Sail into the West if Ick has a slow hand. I could Vamp for Tireless Tracker. Oh. Oh, okay. Name sticker goblin. All right, you got it. Into five mana. Into bone horde drachosaur. Okay, well, I guess we're going to have to vamp for an answer to the bone horde. That's fair, I suppose. All right, well, let's go ahead and vamp. Leyline binding is probably pretty good against red because I can cast that for one mana and then regrowth the vamp if I want. Yeah, I think that's probably going to going to be the case. All right. So I go Xander's Lounge, Leyline Binding, and Nug the Dracosaur, and then stop on my upkeep because I'm going to regrowth the Vampiric Tutor since I got nothing better to do. And Ick put a lot of resources into that. Had to use a Name Sticker Goblin, which he still got a 2 2 out of it, and play City of Traitors. So it's not a, it was not free to, to, to Bone Horde there. Okay, City Traders is going away here, I would imagine. No, Noble might be take, going down, yeah. Do I want to upkeep Vamp? Well, I guess we'll see what this is. Robber of the Rich. We have equal amounts of cards. Yeah, I guess so. I go to 12, upkeep, I'm going to Vamp and go to 10. And I think I'm going to get, it's kind of funny, but I think I'm going to get Territorial Kavu. Could also get Courser. Maybe Courser's a little better. Don't want Tireless Tracker. Yeah, I could do Courser here. And I'll take two off Overgrown Tomb. I think I want Besaju in hand still. Play Courser. All right, well, Marsh Flats, even though I, I don't get to play it off the top of my library, is pretty good at filtering with Courser. Powerful green black deck. Vampiric Tutoring for a Courser and. <laughs> <laughs> Ley line binding over the course of the game. Elegant parlor. Keeping it on top and hopefully not making a play this turn. Oh, Eidolon. Well, I guess I'm glad I got Corsair and I'm glad I saved Besaju because I can blow up an enchantment. All right, don't need to upkeep. Stop. Terra Sunder, huh? All right. Well, we'll see about that. I don't mind a Terra Sunder in theory. I don't really have a reason to to crack this marsh flats quite yet 
Okay, Caves of Chaos Adventure. Okay. Don't like that. I guess I have to keep Terra Sunder then. And end of turn, I guess I will besage you the Eidolon. And I think I will draw the Terra Sunder. There's not much I can draw that'd be a lot better. So happy enough to draw that to kill the Caves of Chaos Adventure and then I still don't really get to attack which is kind of unfortunate um, plow under I, I really can't afford just get Savannah gain a life territorial Kavu okay well at least that's a 5-5 five five. guess I'll just pass I don't really need to do anything right now since I can't attack anyway you know we've got Terra Sunder in hand so you definitely aren't going to put the two counters on the Caves of Chaos Adventure but you might want to put them on the robber of the rich. Problem is, if you attack with robber, I get to attack back. Though presumably, Ick's going to be able to play another card this turn. So I'm in, I would say, a bit of trouble. Need Sign of Draco. Get my 4-4 four, four flyer with Trample. Okay, it's got some counters. And Cycle, Jetmere's Garden. I guess that's about as good as I could hope for to start. And before you attack, I will be tearing asunder the Caves of Chaos Adventure. And you attack with the Robber of the Rich. If you don't have a blocker, you might not. It'd be nice if this Courser paid dividends here. All right. Cast with Kicker on that. And if you don't have a play, can't really attack with Robber. All right. I guess we do have a play. Or you're willing to sacrifice Name Sticker Goblin to deal for. But I'm kind of assuming... Oh, no play. It's interesting. All right. It's a jar, so that doesn't do too much. Let's attack first here. Oh, you're just going to let me take the initiative? That's odd. Okay. Yeah, I'll go get... Uh, I guess I'll get a mountain. And play Territorial Kavu. And then play a Nissa. Or play a land to gain a life, and then next turn I can play a Nissa. Oh, what do we have? End of turn. Something? Nothing? Who knows? Oh, do I just die? I guess I just die if I block the thing and then I take four. <laughs> well, it looks like I was in a bit of trouble either way. What is going on here? Oh, March. Yeah, all right. We are a dead. All right, uh, playing against mono red. Well, I definitely want the Gargaroth. I don't really want Plow Wonder. And I think I do want the Elves now. I think Terra Sunder's still fine, Endurance still fine. I don't really want Crucible. I don't think that's how this game's gonna end up going. And Memory Jar is also not like the best in the world. But I think it's probably better than regrowth. Regrowth is going to be hard to really utilize here, too. All right. Let's try this on the play here. Any fast bonds? Any fast bonds? Um, companioning Lutri once more. Oh, all right. Well, I'll keep this hand. I guess. Do I, what do I do on turn one? I guess I'm going to play Endotha Trium. I'm just not that worried about a turn one play. If they go like Ruby City of Traders, it'll be pretty annoying. Okay, and then here, I probably just thought seize this turn. And then see what I want to play next. Arc Trail, March, Firebolt. Oh, this Caracas or Ginger. I guess I'll take the March and... Play land and then pass the turn. Lutri Caracas is pretty nice. That's a that's a that's a strong little combination. All right, Sir Ginger the Meal Ender. I think I'm gonna wait on the fast bond here. I'm gonna go Mox Courser. Ooh, I get to play Trop. Nice. All right, and then if they want to double burn the Courser. I'm okay with that. Next turn, I can play. 
I can't quite play Territorial Kavu. I actually think I might end up vamping, especially since my top card is kind of bad. I could get like um, Tireless Tracker. It's not like a crazy thing to consider. Giver of Runes. Oh, interesting. Okay. So what are we doing? We gotta have another play. Interesting. So didn't want to double burn the courser. Uh, I see. Sure, I'll block. I don't really want to take a bunch of damage. I'm happy enough to trade this off for two cards here. Especially since you played Giver of Runes, I already kind of know that creature combat's not going to work out great for me. Vamp. Sail into the west is kind of interesting, but my hand is actually decent, so I kind of don't want to do that. Um, not being able to play red cards this turn is kind of annoying. I could get <laughs> pondered, that seems so weak. Maybe I get tireless tracker, it just gets firebolted though is kind of the problem. How good is sail into the west? I would get to draw step it. And yeah, that actually seems fine. Because I have these two red cards in hand, I can't cast this turn. So let's just do this. Let's get Savannah's probably okay. Pass the turn. Draw step. Sail into the west. And if you want to trade your four cards for new cards, then that is acceptable. I'm going to be happy enough trading my, uh, my two cards for seven. Gonna embark. You gotta vote for embark. That's the only only option that does anything. I am gonna head on out here. I'm sailing to the west. Let's see if I can find some uh, <laughs> some good plays. And get ditching by two red cards. All right. I would like to discard and draw seven. And okay, this is a pretty nice seven. Ooh, we got some we got some action going on here. Wow, Ick didn't discard. Had to have oh comet. Okay, let's see what you got. No six, please. Oh, that's a six. Seven. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just dead now. All right. Well, cool. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, you live by the comet, you die by the comet, and we are 0 1. All right. Time for round two playing against a Sandy Dog. And, well, I'm certainly not going to mulligan this hand. Turn one Noble, turn two Sylvan plus Thoughtseize. And let's hope to hit a little bit of action after that. We've even got a Waterlogged Grove to cycle. Sandy is playing Boros Aggro in a shocking twist. And his deck looks good, as it usually does. All right, so I don't need an upkeep stop. Let's just go Forest Noble. He's got like Ragavan, Reckless Stormseeker, Sarah Paragon, Danto Vanguard, some Stoneforge Mystic with uh, Cauldra Complete. So definitely has some good threats here. Luminarch Aspirant as well. So I'm going to have to... Well, this draws a good start. Getting to go Thoughtseize into Karyatid next turn, and then if I draw any of my five mana plays, we're in good shape. Oh, looks like Noble might be getting taken out. Oh, Ragavan. Well, this is actually a pretty good hand against Ragavan. Oh, Plow Under on three. I don't mind that. Let's just go Thoughtseize. Though I guess I probably don't want to Plow Under if I'm going to get hit by Ragavan at the end of that, but... Let's just start with the Thoughtseize and see where we're at here. He's got Batter School, Glimmerlands. Oh, definitely Luminarch is getting taken out. And Glimmerlands and Dragon's Rage Channeler. Those are good cards for sure. So now you can play a Glimmerlands. Yeah, that's going to be annoying. I really need to draw something decently sized here. Because if I can play it even just like a... A reasonable creature then uh, it makes this attack not possible in which case well I can't stop the attack I mean it's this is so bad but I think it's, it's 
what I got to do. Let's go plow under those two lands. And he's going to get to draw a card and get a treasure. But next turn I can crack Waterlog Grove and hope to find uh, a play. Or I could just draw a play. If I draw Gitrog Monster, for example, then we're really doing it. Gets to play Dragon's Rage Channeler this turn after drawing a card and hitting with the monkey. It's going to be a... It's going to hit Fast Bond. <laughs> and he's going to just play all his lands. It's going to be great. I'm waiting for it. My body is ready. All right, Aragavan. Let's get in there. Draws a card off the Glimmer Lens. I don't really care about any of this stuff anymore. And then hits with Raghavan. And I take four also. I'm at 13. But I'm not too worried about my life total. It's more that I just don't have any action to play here. Exiled Library of Alexandria. Great. That was like that was like me drawing a card. Alright. Well that, that ended up working out kind of nicely at least. And any Gitrog monsters? Gitrog monster would be so sick right now. Overgrown tomb, less so. All right, let's draw action. Territorial Kavu. Crucible. Uh, all right, I'll play. I mean, I'll play Crucible here. I don't really have a reason not to. Probably gonna side basically the same way I sided last time because playing against basically the same deck. And let's see if uh, if we can. Rally here. I guess I'm taking three down to ten. Getting to block Raghavan. Sandy gets to draw a card. Yeah, Glimmerlands is putting in the work here. And then I get to draw, and I guess I have I, Waterlog Grove I can crack thanks to Crucible. So I'll probably do that if I got nothing better to do. Lion Sash. Oh, we can eat the Waterlogged Grove if he wants. Okay, Leyline Binding. So this currently costs three mana, which means I can play Waterlogged Grove and still cast Leyline Binding, which I guess means I can sack Waterlogged Grove to draw a card. Okay. <laughs> Botanical Sanctum, huh? Well, that's not doing a whole lot for me. I think I'm going to have to... Leyline Binding, the Glimmer Lens. I don't really like it, but I feel like... I feel like Sandy drawing an extra card every turn is also pretty bad for me. Because now, even though I have Leyline Binding here, I block Raghavan, I take four, I can even pump the Lion Sash a few times. I guess I could have gotten the Lion Sash. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty dead here. These green fast bond decks, they really, they really do are pr prone to flooding because you also have to have a lot of lands in the deck, or you just the deck doesn't function. So I'm not loving how this is going. Red mana? Am I getting bolted or something? Okay, Lion Sash is going to go to two. And three. I guess could get pumped one more time off of a Luminarch. If Sandy wants to. Okay, hit me down to four. I still think Gitrog could be okay. Tribal Flames not gonna, not going to save me. All right. Well, Tracker would have been good. Crucible out. And plow under out. Gargroth and two elves in. And I think regrowth out. And let's get in there. All right, time for game two. <laughs> I would like to be on the play. And First game I had fast bottom opening hand. I actually think this is still a keepable hand because 
Sandy is mostly white creatures. Didn't seem to have a lot of removal. So I can go turn one Elvish Mystic, and if I draw a land, then I can kind of go from there, but... Uh, or Cursed, Cursed, I tell you. So if I draw a land, what do I play? I guess I probably just go, like, Karyatid Fast Bond, and then I can just set up a... a sail into the West, but of course I didn't draw a land. Let's just play the Karyatid, pass the turn. I could play a 1-1 one -one Territorial Kavu, oh yeah. And Sandy's got Adonto Vanguard. Yeah, that's okay. Land is nice. Let's go Tireless Tracker. And then go Land. And play a Fast Bond. And then next turn, I don't really want to cast Sail into the West. I just want to cast the Gargaroth. But we'll see. If I if I miss on lands, I could crack a clue and then play a Territorial Kavu. I guess uh, one of my triumphs would help. Raugrin or Xander's Lounge would make Kavu a 4 4. I'll take three from Adanto Vanguard this turn. If he's got Reckless Storm Seeker to go with it, that could be kind of annoying. He could be dashing Raghavan. Oh, Inti. Okay. Inti's pretty good here. Gets to discard a card to make the Adanto Vanguard bigger and hope to hit a land or a one drop, I guess, is what is what he's hoping here. Okay, Vanguard goes to a 4-2, and Sandy exiles a mountain, of course. Well, of course. Let's see if I can slam a Gargaroth here, because that would be pretty nice. Simic Growth Chamber, I could go infinite, get infinite clues. Vamp Tutor, huh? Mm, I could vamp. The problem is I can't vamp for something that lets me cast Territorial Kavu this turn. I could vamp for a Simic Growth Chamber. It's not actually crazy. I mean, I could vamp for a basic mountain and then I could play a 2-2 Territorial Kavu. Yeah, that actually sounds reasonable, as strange as that is. Because it lets me get something onto the board. I mean, I could get like a Simic Growth Chamber, but that just doesn't seem very good. Yeah, let's just get the basic mountain. Because if I cast Territorial Kavu this turn, the next turn I can cast Elder Gargaroth, and then the turn after that I will probably cast uh, the Sail into the West here. Draw, get another clue and play a territorial cavu a massive 2-2 and i'll keep both my creatures back here because i'll trade tireless tracker for inti this turn if i get the opportunity to do so will i block the adanto vanguard with territorial cavu that i'm a little bit less sure about it doesn't that doesn't sound super appealing okay so sandy still has a million cards in hand Fast Bond has done nothing. <laughs> it's, always, it's always nice when you draft the deck around Fast Bond, and then the first time you draw Fast Bond, it's with the literal one land hand. Oh, so Sandy's playing a land, so maybe he's not discarding to Inti this turn. That could be the case. You know, drawing, uh, let's see, Raugrin Triumph. I guess I don't have, oh, oh he had to play the, the planes first, I see. Well, you can discard to Inti now and hit me for seven. I think I'm going to block the Adanto Vanguard. Problem is, there's a lands I could draw that would make Territorial Kavu into a 4-4 immediately, but I'm not very close to doing so. He's going to discard to Inti here to make Inti into a 3-3. Probably going to hit a Raghavan. <laughs> I think blocking I think blocking the Adanto Vanguard makes sense. It just basically trades Territorial Kavu for four life while also making him pay four life. Uh, he did hit Lion Sash. I guess that's not too bad. Okay, block. Pay your life. All right, take my turn here. I'm just going to play Gargaroth, Nissa, 
Nissa is not not gonna do it. All right, well, it's Gargaroth, and just you know, cross my fingers here, because if he can't deal with Gargaroth, then he doesn't really have an attack. And if he can, then I die. I guess I go to one technically, but if Cindy kills the Gargaroth, I assume I'm dead. Luminarch Aspirant. Oh, are we going to attack with a 6-6 six, six Adanto Vanguard? Yeah, that's fine. I'll take 6, go to 5, and then I attack back with Gargaroth. That's going to be my plan here. And then I can get blocked, and I, that's okay too. Alright, I will take 6. I'm glad I chumped last turn, because chumping this turn would do less because of Trample. Beaumont Courier got exiled. Alright, I'll take 6, down to 5. I don't have a solution to the Adanto Vanguard yet. That part is a little annoying. Land and Beaumont Courier. All right, let's attack with the Gargs. Oh, that is an answer, okay. Five. Um, I'm gonna attack and I think I'm going to make a 3-3 beast because I think that I think that basically gains me 3 life here on this board. Sandy can block with a bunch of creatures here, but I feel like that's a bit of a risk. All right, and then now I'm going to pass. Unfortunately, I can't crack a clue. I, I can't take the risk. So he probably draws a card off Sunbay Canyon, but it'll depend on what's in his hand. And then on my turn, I get to block and then tear asunder, which is pretty nice. All right, he's so going to draw off Sunbay Canyon. Oh, end of turn, cast Containment Priest. Okay. Interesting. I do have a bunch of blockers because I have a bunch of elves and, and beasts and whatnot. I actually feel like I'm in pretty good shape here. If Sandy doesn't draw an answer to... Gargaroth. Is this each Strew unexpectedly absent? <laughs> yep, that is what happened. No cards in hand right off the top, huh? All right, well, I guess that's that. Am I literally dead? I guess we'll see what he does, but yes, I am dead. <laughs> what a draw. And... I can tear asunder the Adanto Vanguard. I guess the Inti can get up to a 5-5, five five, so I can't really even block it. Okay. Attack with everything. I block three things. I mean, I guess I don't technically die here, I don't think. We'll see. Just going to discard his card, of course. Hellrider, also pretty good. Oh, I hope he puts the counter on the Adanto Vanguard, because that gives it trample and all that. All right, so now, let's see. Beast can kill Inti. Block. Block. I mean, I have to block with the Elf. Yeah. And then I lose. I go to one. Yeah, I mean, I think... That's basically it. I don't really have... I guess I did need to crack the clue to draw one. That would have been a, a way to potentially win. What a shame. All right. Inti dies. These bounce. That, and I go to one, and I'm facing down a bunch of things. And I'm drawing a... Gargaroth, I guess I can crack the clue to draw another card. Cindy has no cards in hand. Yeah, you're not going to do anything. All right. This is mostly out of curiosity to see what would have happened. Because if there was a land here, I could have cracked the clue. Oh, not a land that would have worked. All right. Oh, and two. Let's see if we can get redemption in our last round. All righty. Let's see if we can get one here. Our team is down bad. Mmm. Mmm. That, that is a fast pond. Four lands in a memory jar? Okay. This this looks good playing against uh, Adham here, who's got a pretty sweet looking deck. 
Hopefully he doesn't draw a mana crypt. And it's just passed. No reason to play Beseju. So what do I get off of Verdant Catacombs here? I suppose I get Indotha Trium. Yeah. Draw. Mm, let's just play. Oh, I can't play Jar. What am I thinking? One short. For some reason, I thought I had five. Um, ooh. Okay, let's go. Play Tireless Tracker here. And I don't have a land drop to hit now, but I'm drawing Overgrown Tomb, so I can play a land next turn. He's getting a Ketria Triome here. And if he kills the, the Tireless Tracker, it isn't the end of the world. Because I have Tomb into Memory Jar. I suppose I would prefer not to crack Jar this turn. Let's go Overgrown Tomb, Pay 2 Life. Memory Jar. And assuming this resolves, which... It might not. All right. Let's turn three jar with a tracker in play. Then next turn, we're going to do some business here. Hopefully the, the jar survives. And I'm in pretty good shape if so, because then I'll have a ton of mana, a ton of cards, a fast bond, and all that. Is this a DAC or something? That would be a little annoying. Oh, Kite Sail Larcenist. Oh. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty good. It's going to lock down the Tireless Tracker for the moment here. So on my turn, I think I'm going to go... Yeah, I think I will Tribal Flames the Larcenist. It's a little awkward to be doing this on the same turn as Uncracking Jar. But I think it's worth it because I would like to be able to get some Tireless Tracker equity here, which I assume I will get after I crack this jar and draw some lands. Oh, okay, we drew a lot of stuff. All right, I can actually make a bunch of clues with... I can pay a life to make a clue with Simic Growth Chamber, which is funny. Which actually seems pretty reasonable to do... I'll probably pay one life here. All right, play a Mox. And my cards are going away end of turn. So what I think I'm going to do is go Growth Chamber. Um, let's just bounce the Mountain here. Play the Mountain. I don't really need to vamp and get something this turn, but I'm going to go to a 10. And I kind of just want to vamp for Plow Under. And then cast an Endurance here. And I'll Endurance myself in case... I do have Regrowth, but I'm about to be able to Regrowth Plow Under, so I'm not that worried. And then I also have Sail into the West I could get back. But I think having Tribal Flames back in my deck is probably worth it. Okay, so you had, <laughs> I jarred him into... DAC, Fairy, Mastermind, Hole Breacher. Oh, Hole Breacher. Uh, that, could be, that could be tough. All right, Sentinel is not going to get the job done. Let's go plow under on <laughs> your two kind of painful lands. I guess he gets to crack the map token to get that back. But uh, all right, there we go. We got a game. <clears throat> mm, do I want to side in him to Turok? Probably not. I think... We're good to go here. All right. <clears throat> well, the, the the game where we drew fast spawn and a bunch of lands in our opening hand worked pretty well. Let's see if we can uh, copy that again. Uh, not quite, but I actually think this hand is fine. I get to go Indotha Triome into Vamp or Thoughtseize. Kind of depends on what I draw here. Uh, turn one Mana Crypt is going to be tough. Let's just play the Indotha Triome, and then Ponder's nice. Getting Hole Breacher here. Oh, no. Malcolm. Hey, it's very Mastermind, too. He's got a lot of things that could have been. 
Okay, so he's won the flip. Hole breacher will, in fact, get me good. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to dot seize and then cast ponder. It's going to be my plan here. But turn one mana crypt into Malcolm is going to be tough. I suspect this will be about as lopsided as the turn one fast bond game. I guess it depends what you what Adam has here as a follow up. <laughs> Shout out to Adam, by the way. He qualified for the, the Pro Tour in Seattle based on his regional champs finish in Denver. It's a good show. He even lost to Raptor in round one. Raptor, rise from the dead. Kin and Bonder Prodigy. Oh. Hmm. Mm, I guess I can't. I guess I might as well ponder first at this point. Oh, I did hit Marsh Flats. So now what I can do is draw Marsh Flats, cast Exploration, and then play Marsh Flats, crack it. I think I just get Basic Swamp. I don't need Overgrown Tomb here. And then Thought Seize. Then keep an upkeep stop just in case. Stern scolding, subtlety, Olvenwald oddity. Oof, I guess I gotta just take the Olvenwald oddity. I can kind of play this so I don't play a creature for a bit, though honestly, I think I'm in really bad shape. I'm getting hit for four. Subtlety and Stern scolding are both on deck. I guess I can <laughs> vamp for. <laughs> mountain for the second time somehow and uh, tribal flames the Malcolm down discard stern scolding okay plays flooded strand so on a one mana short of Kinnon as well uh oh we're playing something here that's not good news for me six mana something oh I guess five because uh Mana Crypt taps for extras. Lorien revealed to draw three. Ay, ay, ay. Into Birds of Paradise. All right. The power play, as usual. Get Mountain, draw Mountain. Actually, I have to Tribal Flames the Kinnon, I think. Given where we're at. Tribal Flames for the full five. And then next turn... <laughs> I'm going to get whacked. He's got subtlety in hand still. You know, if he lost a couple more mana crypt flips, I could have maybe tribal flames to him, but it didn't seem like a very good play. What is this for five mana pre-combat? Feywild Caretaker. Okay, okay, okay. Lots enough of that. Um, Gargroth looks like it could be kind of good. I'm just going to get this Crucible out of here. This thing was doing nothing for me. All right, game three on the play. Let's do it. Oh, this hint's awesome. Okay, so I can't quite play a turn one tracker, though I'm obviously somewhat close. Let's go Mox, Exploration, uh, Mountain, and I could play Simic Growth Chamber. I think I will. The reason I'm going to play Simic Growth Chamber is I feel like I'm going to have enough land drops. I don't need to do the, like, Simic Growth Chamber bounce it back to my hand thing. It just doesn't seem like a good play. Ooh, turn on bird. Okay, that's also a, a good start, but you you got to have a pretty good hand to keep up with this. No subtlety, please. Mm, okay. Sanctum. What? just happened. I think I clicked through. <sighs> That's annoying. That is not what I meant to do. All right. Kinnon. I should have had an extra land in play and a tireless tracker clue here. So hopefully it doesn't cost me too badly, but I, uh, I hit F2 whilst I was doing that. Okay, Sylvan Library, that, that is okay. All right, let's draw, play a land. This gets a clue. 
And I think I'm going to crack a clue off of the Simic growth chamber here. Do I want to besage you the Sylvan library? I might. It does it does put another land into play for Adham here, but not letting him see three cards when he already has access to four, maybe five mana seems pretty good. I, I guess we'll see what these clues dredge up here. Oh, Territorial Kavu. All right, that sounds like a play to me. So let's pay the life. Let's investigate. Let's cast Territorial Kavu. And let's attack. And you know what? I'm going to let him Sylvan. I'm just going to crack the clue as well. Just do an extra point of damage. And I feel like giving, giving you ex extra mana isn't that good. And... Sylvan is just not as good when you can't really pay the life, and Territorial Cov is about to be a 5-5 next turn. So I feel pretty good about that. All right. Didn't end up paying any extra, which is nice. Four mana here. Hopefully this isn't a Basalt Monolith into a, into infinite mana into win. Olvenwald Oddity. Okay. Mm, no attacks. Let's draw... Mm, let's crack the clue, I think. Sail into the west is not bad. All right, let's play Ragnar and Triumph. Make the Kavu a 5-5. Five, five. I think I'll play Marsh Flats. And then send with both and... Mm, I think I will discard a card and draw a card. And I think I'm just going to discard Memory Jar. Because I'm, I'm not going to need to... Oh. This is actually going to work out kind of nicely. So let's do that. Let's And let's go vamp. And I can get... I think Leyline Binding is going to be what I want to get here. Crack a clue to draw the Leyline Binding. Get a Savannah, I think, is going to what it's going to be. And then cast Leyline Binding for a white. And then now my Territorial Kavu lives. And I guess I'll exile the Kinnon. I think that that's the one I would be happiest if it came back all of a sudden. You're not getting anything. You're getting a Ketria Triumph. You don't have anything. All right. Boom. And this is a lot of pressure. All right. Territorial Kavu into... into or Tracker into Kavu did some good work. And... <clears throat> I have a, a reset here, a, a fresh refill if I need to. So randomly not playing a land didn't cost me, which is nice. And it looks like we've got a pretty good shot of one twoing here. The dream. Mm. And uh, we'll see, because we have two lethal threats out now. And uh, Addy over here has five mana at most if he plays a land. I guess he could go like... Land Feywild Caretaker, make a 1-1, one, one, but then he's like double chump mode. Oh, he has to play a Fiery Islet too. All right. Oh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay, and you can bounce the Tireless Tracker and then chump. All right. That's... You got to do what you got to do. Oh, well, Nissa will end the game here. I guess this is not technically lethal, but it's going to be pretty hard to imagine coming back. And you know what? We'll take the one, two. Looking at this deck, it, look, this is just a, what the green decks are, where if you draw Fast Bond or Exploration in your opening hand, and you're like 19 land deck effectively, 18 lands plus mocks, then I feel like the deck does well. When you don't, the deck can struggle a bit. Cards like Corsair and Endurance and Crucible are just not that strong individually. Plow Wonder, you need to have at least board parity to be good. I never got Get Rock going, though I did want to draw it a bunch of times. So I think this deck was just okay, and its record reflects that. So there you are. Uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. They can't always be winners, but this deck was at least fun to play. And you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft and hopefully some better results. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.